How's it? Welcome back to Hawaiian Horology. Today we'll be reviewing the very interesting BRX5 by Bell & Ross. It's a very interesting watch with a very interesting dial and a very interesting case. So if you want to know more, stay tuned. So here we go. Here we go, folks. It's the BRX5 by Bell & Ross, released in 2022. And I don't even think, it, um, I think they announced it in Watches of Wonders 2022, but none of the really the models even uh, hit the hit the streets until maybe 2023 or so. I was very interested about this watch on release. And I just kind of was, I really do like Bell & Ross. I really did appreciate their older models, the... Uh, I think it's the 03 model or the 92-03 just a standard bell and ross a circle in a square but once they came out with this and even the br05 i was very interested in that as well but once they came out with this one i was like wow this one is very nice i love the color it just adds a little bit more to it this ice blue dial and even has an ice blue gasket um, in the middle that matches the uh, strap perfectly. So this watch m measures in at 41 millimeters in width. The height is only 12.8. It does wear and it does feel a bit thicker than the height would suggest, maybe because of the, um, just the type of mid case that it has. I'm not even sure what this is called, but it has kind of like a hollow, hollow center. I've seen these kind of uh, mid cases on I mean, not that many watches that I can think of. Um, I think this uh, other models that do have this type of center, and it's not exactly like this, but I've seen maybe on the Moser uh, Pioneer, that watch, and the newer um, Audemars Piguet, I believe it's the 5911. Maybe it's a code 5911. But 5911 sounds kind of close to 5711. So would they make a model like that? I'm not really sure. I'm going to have to check on that. If you know what model that I'm talking about, it's their newer newer dress line that they just released a few years ago. They do have kind of like a hollow case uh, like this. But um, one of the things that is kind of polarizing about this watch is the power reserve. And it is this uh, date uh, window here. Of course, it shows three days on the date. So I guess we'll see if we can uh, make this work. If your minute hand is covering the date as such, you can kind of guess what day it is. But I mean, you're only talking about one minute out of the day that it's really, or one minute every hour that it's really covering up the day. But I think it just adds a little extra to the to the dial. It's part of their like design that I really appreciate. Also, the power reserve, I don't mind it at all either. So let's go ahead and wind it up. Let's go ahead and wind it up. And you can see the power reserve going up, 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 up. It won't take too many uh, winds to make this watch uh, become fully wound. But um, I just think it adds a little more depth to the dial. And it just makes it a little bit more interesting. Of course, it's applied indices all the way around the date window is framed i guess it's more like a picture window here because it's so large and the uh, power reserve indicator is also uh framed here we have four screws that are perfectly aligned pointing inside here and on the other side of the case we have their logo the ampersand with some pretty beefy crown guards i think it, i think it looks fine it adds um adds more character and even the crown guards have a little more hollow um hollow area to them so I really do like this watch I got it um not too long ago I've been wearing it quite a bit I've been spending a lot of time between this one and the uh the white Omega Speedmaster which I'm going to review shortly here and one of the things I do really like how soft and supple and comfortable this bracelet is but this watch is kind of on the I mean I don't think it's that heavy but with this strap, it feels a little bit heavy along the wrist. Um, 
One thing I would like to see or would rather have seen with this watch would be a little bit maybe thicker strap. It could still be this soft and it just, I think it needs to be a tad thicker so that it wears on the wrist a little bit better. Um, but it still wears just fine. It's very comfortable, very nice watch. Um, a nice uh, deploying class with the Bell & Ross uh, uh, symbol, the ampersand there. But yeah, tell me what you guys think about this watch. I think it's a very interesting watch. I really like all of the models that they're coming out with. And I am very interested in picking up the uh, integrated uh, bracelet for it. On their website, it's about a thousand bucks. And I do want to pick it up. I mean, a thousand is, I mean, it's about right for a bracelet. If you see my other Tudor video, the bracelet, the Jubilee five link bracelet they have was about a thousand bucks as well. So that's the going, the going rate for a OEM bracelet. I've been very interested in integrated sports bracelet watches lately. I don't really have any besides the PRXs that I showed in my collection earlier. And I have another one about the three watches under a thousand dollars. So I have two PRXs. Those are very nice, but I do want to venture into the higher luxury uh, integrated sports bracelet pieces. I got my eye on this uh, rose gold uh, GP Laureato, which I don't know, it's very expensive and I would have to sell a bunch of watches just to get that. So the only thing that is holding me back from buying this integrated bracelet is that I really, really do like the new BR05, the ceramic version that they came out with this watch. And if I do pick up that one, it will be on the bracelet. So it'll be, it's the black ceramic bracelet that they have. And I don't want two watches. Of course, this is stainless steel. The bracelets are, I believe, the same. Just that it's in different materials. So I would have two watches with kind of the same bracelets, which is kind of funny because, you know, everybody who has a bunch of Rolexes, they're all in the same bracelet too. But that's neither here nor there. So I would have this one, the black ceramic version of this one. I have another integrated bracelet watch. That is coming soon, and I can't wait to get it on wrist and review it for you guys. But let me know what you guys think about this watch. Let me know specifically what you think about this type of date wheel and this type of power reserve. Like I said, I like the power reserve. I think it's a tool, and I think they make it very tooly. It looks kind of like a gas gauge. Uh, some of the Grand Seikos that have power reserves, I don't know if I like an elegant power reserve. I saw a Chopard. Um, watch. I'm not sure what model it is, but it looked straight up like a fuel gauge, and I thought that one was great. It was, um, I know it's one of the uh, collaborations that they do have with um, Bamford, but they have that one in their regular lineup too. I'll try to find a picture and add it into this video, but let me know what you think about this, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Shoots!